Hello students, we're working on chapter 3 in the, our textbook Integrating Technology and Media into Instruction, um, the Assure model. That is chapter 3. So let's do a quick review. If you take a look down here, you'll see that this chapter is all about the Assure model and we're going to talk about each one of these things that are on this uh, page. And uh, we're going to talk about what the A-S-S-U-R-E stands for. So you're going to look on page 38. Make sure that you know what NETS T and NETS S is. That was covered in a previous chapter. If you need to, go back and look at chapter 1. And it says, what is the Assure model? The Assure model is research-based, which means research was done and the and it was this model came up as a way to t integrate technology into instruction. It's a step-by-step -step method. It's an effective integration of technology and media. And the lessons align with NETS T and NETS S. So, and the lessons align with local and national standards. So when you create the lesson, you're also aligning it with the standards. <coughs> Robert Gange, uh, in 1995, it's on page 38. Uh, the Assure model was based on Gange's events of instruction. He was the person who did the research and realized that if well-designed lessons begin with the arousal of students' interest. So the first thing you have to do is to get the students engaged and give them a hook to come in. You present the new materials and then you involve the students with activity. The last thing is to assess the students' understanding and then provide follow-up activities. It's very simple and this is what we use in the classroom today, and it works, and the Assure model is based on this. And this is what the Assure model stands for. And if you look on page 39, you'll see each one of these with an explanation. A is for analyzed learners, S is for state standards and objectives, the next S is for select strategies and resources, U is for utilize resources, R is for require learner participation, E is for evaluate and revise. Going to page 40, the first thing is the A, analyze the learners. Understand the general characteristics that may influence student learners. The general characteristics are the constant variables. That means these are the things that never change. The gender of the students in the classroom. You know how many males and how many females you have. The ethnicity. That is not going to change. How old the children are or the students are in the classroom. Those are the constant variables. Those are the ones that don't change. But there are changing variables. Ability levels. Students of the same age may have different ability levels. They may have different reading levels. The attitude and interest. Are students interested? And what's their attitude about learning? Those are the variables. Those can change from student to student and group to group. In column two, it says specific entry competencies. So when the students start the lesson, you're going to think about the prior knowledge. What do they know? And you can pre-test students, and there are ways to do it, which we'll talk about as we go along. One of them is an actual pre-test, and one is to ask students what they know about this topic, maybe to write it down. You can do a KWL chart, which is like, what do you know? What do you want to learn? And then what did you learn at the end? And, and then there's informal and formal measures you can ask in this classroom. How many people know about whatever it is? Raise your hand. And then ask them, well, what do you know about it? So it can be formal or it can be informal. The last thing when you analyze your learners, you're going to look at their learning styles. Students have multiple intelligences and they learn in different ways. And as you learn your students in your classroom, you will know which ones learn better by reading, which ones learn better by auditory, which ones learn better by uh, visual. And the idea is when you do a lesson is to include all these modalities, include visual, include audio, include reading, so that um, students can learn in different paths. Information processing habits. How do your students learn? How motivated are they? And can you motivate them? And psychological factors. Okay, going on to page 41 and 43 to 43. This is what the first S stands for. State standards and objectives. State the standards and learning standards for the lesson. 
Okay, we will talk about standards as we go along, but when you create the lesson, you put in the standards. This, and you should know what a st the difference between a standard and a learning objective is. A standard is a description of expected student performance outcome established at the school, district, state, or national level, st such as students will learn I'm Students will learn how to read visuals. That's very general. Students will be able to, to write about charts and graphs. That is, very vis that is very general. The learning objective asks, what new things will students learn by the end of the lesson? Re let me repeat that. What new things students will learn by the end of the lesson? So when you give the lesson, the objective might be, the students will learn how to read and interpret a, uh, a pie chart. So it's very specific for that lesson. A learning objective is a statement of what each learner will achieve, not how the lesson will be taught. So the question is when you put in a learning objective, what will the students learn by the end of the lesson? That is what the learning objective is. Going to page 41 to 42, the importance of standards and objectives. They're the basis for students' learning expectations, and then that helps you figure out the strategies, the technology, and the media selection. So that becomes the basis for the strategies, technology, and media selection, and the basis for assessment. So the standards and objectives guide the lesson. <coughs> Okay, you're going to need to look through the book a little bit to get all of this. And it has to do with when you're doing the standard state and objectives, you're going to review audience behavior, conditions, and degree. So looking at the first one is the ABCDs of well-stated learning objectives. So it says audience, behavior, conditions, and degree. Let's go on to talk about that part. <coughs> Table 3.2 on page 44 the helpful hundred behavior terms. So you're going to look at the uh, list and these are action verbs. So when you write an objective you want to include these action verbs. Action verbs is what you want the students to do. They're going to add single digit numbers. They're going to graph uh, the results of the the survey that they did. They're going to organize uh, those shapes. They're going to paint the picture to illustrate what you just read to them. They're going to verbalize and go, so on. So that these are the action verbs. This is what you're going to have the students do. So when you write the objectives, you need to use these action verbs. Curriculum usually lacks the use of technology to assist students in achieving objectives. The objectives are written. It tells you how, what you want the students to learn, but it doesn't tell you how to teach them. So this is where the instructional strategies come in. The teacher has to choose the instructional strategies. They have to decide how they're going to teach it. And they can include technology as part of their instructional technology. Teachers can add technology standards, NETS S. Review the samples on page 44 to 45 to help clarify this. Next, select strategies, technology, media, and materials on page 46. Selecting strategies. Now, there's teacher-centered and student-centered strategies. This is what you actually do with the students. The teacher center is where the teacher is teaching activities, presenting a concept, such as showing a video, reading a story. The teacher is the center. Then there are student-centered activities, where teacher acts as a facilitator. Example, small group discussion to analyze information, pairs of students researching videos on the internet. So when students are learning on their own with you as the facilitator, that becomes a student-centered. <clears throat> and the bottom line, all of this should result in student learning. And you'll find that most lessons contain both teacher and student-centered activities, a little of each. Going on with Select Strategies, Technology, Media, and Materials, page 46. Selecting technology and media. There's a rubric available in the book that helps you select <coughs> materials to evaluate them. And then selecting, modifying, or designing materials. Where can you get these materials? In a school, 
you can get through you can use technology you can use the internet uh, but the one of the biggest places where you can get help and define materials is with your media specialists in the media center at your school you can work with other teachers especially new teachers should work with their teammates at their school and those te the, the experienced teachers share with the new teachers and then media resource guides so this is some of the places to get materials and media for your students you can modify existing materials and you can design new materials so let's talk about that what are the three where are the three ways you get uh, materials one is you get you use existing materials, available materials. Two, you modify existing materials. And three, you can design your own materials. Going on in the textbook, you'll see utilize technology, media, and materials. <coughs> and they're the five P's. And, um, and this is a process. Preview the technology. This is what you do when you pick materials to use in your classroom you or for the lesson you are going to review them do not show students a video without reviewing it do not give students anything to do with to do without doing it yourself first Pew, preview the technology media and materials oops I'm backwards sorry prepare the technology or say have it ready have a link for them have the materials out for them on the table whatever it is be ready for them prepare the environment do you want them to sit in rows do you want them to sit where do you want them to sit bring the materials out set up the room prepare the learners tell them what they're going to learn tell them what they're going to do and then provide the learning experience these are the five P's in the process and then one of the things that's really important it in the uh, assure for the R is uh, part of the Assure lesson is to require learner participation. So practice when the student when they're working is technology is a productivity can be a productivity tool. It can be a communication tool. It can be a research tool, problem solving and decision making tool. Uh, there are examples in the textbook. Check the textbook for the examples. You can use educational software or other media. This is the students actually doing it. The feedback is regardless of correctness of practice, regarding the correctness of practice. The feedback is you're going to see, did it work? Did, my, did what I did work? Should be helpful. Now, when you, you're you basically going to evaluate what you did and you're going to look at it, you're the teacher, you're going to evaluate. You can have peers, I mean, other professionals can evaluate you and you can do a self-check. And then the Assure, the E stands for Evaluate and Revise. So you're going to do is you're going to assess the lear learner achievement. Did the student learn? You're going to use, use rubrics or authentic assessments. Did they create this? Did they complete this? Or portfolios, traditional or, or electronic. So this is, these are ways to assess your learners. And then you're going to evaluate and revise strategies, technology, and media. Evaluate the teaching by yourself, by your students, by your peers, by your administrator. It could be any of these or a combination of any of these. And then you're going to revise strategies, technology, and media. As you teach, every time you teach a lesson, you're going to say, oh, I could have done that. Or oh, maybe this should have worked. You learn something from every time you teach a lesson and how to improve it the next time. So that's what the E stands for. Okay? At the end of the book, at the end of the chapter, you will see... Uh, demonstrating your professional knowledge so review these questions all right I'm not going to read them they're in the back of the chapter they're up here and review those and see and make sure you know the answers to that so that's it for chapter 3